Lost in the vast expanse of the open sea, the Mary Celeste emerges as a ghostly silhouette, sails billowing in the wind, and an eerie silence hanging in the air. What happened to the crew that once manned this enigmatic vessel, leaving it abandoned in the heart of the Atlantic Ocean? An alarming find was made by the British merchant ship Die Grasher on December 5, 1872, some 600 kilometers east of the Azores. A ship in what seemed to be peril was noticed by the crew out in the distance. It was the Mary Celeste, a commercial brigantine that had left New York on November 7 with a cargo of industrial alcohol and was on its way to Genoa. The ship had set sail from Genoa, along with her captain Benjamin S. Briggs, his wife Sarah, and the couple's daughter Sophia, who was two years old, she had a total of eight crew members on board. However, Captain David Morehouse of the Die Gratia dispatched a boarding party to investigate, and when they got there, they discovered that the ship was empty. A portion of the Mary Celeste voyage was completed without a single member of the crew present. In addition to the fact that her lifeboat was gone, one of her pumps had been destroyed, and the six month stock of food and water had not been touched. The Mary Celeste looked to be unharmed, with the exception of 3.5 feet of water in the ship's hull. Nonetheless, this amount of water was insufficient to sink the vessel or impede its journey. Why, therefore, would the crew desert a ship that seemed to be in good health? For almost a century, professional and amateur detectives alike have been puzzled over the answer to this question. An investigation into what happened to the Mary Celeste and her crew was conducted in Gibraltar when the ghost ship was found and brought to the city. During inspections of the ship, cuts were discovered on the bow. Nevertheless, there was no conclusive proof that it had been in a collision or that it had been damaged by harsh weather. It was determined that the spots that seemed to be blood on a rail and the captain's sword were really something else entirely. Some of the investigators looked into the crew of the Digratia because they were suspicious that they could have been responsible for the deaths of the people aboard the Mary Celeste in order to collect the prize for salvaging empty ship. In the end, there was not a single shred of evidence that might point to any type of wrongdoing. After some time had passed, some of the money that had been won from the salvage operation was given to the crew of the Digratia. The investigation into the Mary Celeste did not provide a lot of insight into what happened to the ship's crew. J. Habakkuk Jefferson's statement was the title of a short tale that was written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle in 1884. At the time, Doyle was working as a ship's physician. Within the narrative, he introduced a plethora of new twists and turns into the Mary Celeste account. His account detailed an angry slave who wreaked havoc on the ship's crew before setting sail for Africa. Despite the fact that Doyle had meant for the narrative to be interpreted as a work of fiction, he was nonetheless asked on many occasions whether the account was in fact genuine. Doyle's account, which was published two years after the discovery of the Mary Celeste, reignited interest in the mystery of the ship. Since then, there has been a lot of conjecture on what happened to the ship's missing crew. Treachery gets number one because it was essentially the prevailing theory during the actual salvage inquiry in 1872. Naturally, Sully Flood and his court accused the crew of the digrasha of wrongdoing. Furthermore, the commanders of both ships were pals. Briggs was a seasoned sailor who was well liked to the maritime community. Captain Morehouse was extremely worried when digrasha first noticed the abandoned Mary Celeste since it belonged to his buddy. They may have even dined together the night before Briggs and Mary Celeste set sail at New York's Astor House. It's hardly improbable that Morehouse and the Digratia were involved. After all, they had a vested interest in the salvage. But given his closeness with Briggs and the lack of proof of violence, it doesn't seem right. However, theories of betrayal were not restricted to the Digratia. Other theories have included piracy and mutiny. Nothing seems to have been taken Thus, piracy can be ruled out. Why would pirates murder everyone on board just to abandon a perfectly excellent ship filled with goods at sea? Mutiny also seems to be improbable. Commander Briggs was a competent, fair, and sensible commander, according to all contemporaneous sources. It's one of the reasons why many have been baffled by Mary Celeste's unnecessary abandonment. It's also unlikely that he would employ guys he didn't know well while traveling with his wife and daughter. 
Even if there had been a mutiny, why would Briggs' crew depart the ship after taking command? It would have been a suicide attempt. Another possibility revolves on the ship's cargo. 1,701 barrels of industrial grade alcohol. According to the narrative, some of the barrels may have leaked hazardous vapors, which is backed by the nine empty barrels discovered on board. These vapors may have piled up and caused a tiny explosion, or at the very least made the ship's crew and captain fearful of an explosion. Briggs may have then ordered a temporary evacuation so that everyone on board might sail in a lifeboat behind the Mary Celeste until the fumes dissipated. Their town line may have snapped at some time, leaving the lifeboat behind as everyone on board watched the Mary Celeste drift away, leaving them alone and powerless in the huge Atlantic, like something out of a nightmare. Although there was no visual evidence of a cabin fire, the probability of alcohol vapors that never combusted remains. Even a calm, seasoned skipper would choose a temporary evacuation in such a situation, particularly if his own family was on board. It's too bad the evacuation was permanent. Another explanation is based on a faulty pump. This idea may have the most in its favor. When researchers compared Solly Flood's notes on the case to oceanography data, they discovered that the Mary Celeste was 120 miles west of where Briggs thought he was, possibly due to a faulty chronometer, so he had clearly become disoriented. The ship altered route the day before it was abandoned, maybe to avoid heavy seas. However, an experienced skipper like Briggs would not have abandoned ship due to terrible weather or broken chronometers. Something else has to be there. This is when the pumps enter the picture. The Mary Celeste had formerly carried coal as her cargo and had lately been thoroughly restored and reconditioned. As a consequence, the pump might have been blocked with coal and sawdust. This explains why one of the ship's two pumps was discovered dismantled. Briggs couldn't tell how much salt water had poured into the hull without the pump, and with the cargo hold filled Tetra style with barrels of industrial grade alcohol. We know there was flooding because of the three and a half feet of water witnessed by the boarding crew, but Briggs would have been dubious of the amount. Briggs had been fighting storms, was bewildered, and couldn't tell whether his ship was going to remain afloat at this time. Briggs may have ordered the ship abandoned with Santa Maria in sight on the date of the final entry in the logbook, when he still had the possibility to reach shore with the lifeboat. Who knows what happened to Mary Celestia after that? In six miles of open water in a lifeboat, a lot may happen. In the end, it's doubtful that anybody will ever have a clear explanation about what happened to Mary Celeste and her crew. It seems possible that the tale of the Mary Celeste, which is considered to be one of the greatest maritime enigmas in history, will continue to be told for many more decades. To share your thoughts, theories and reflections in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel for more intriguing explorations into history's unsolved mysteries.